everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our December webinar on mass mailing with bullhorn. As Sarah said, I'm Nancy Lobbs, and first I'd like to review the agenda with everyone. So more specifically, let's take a look at our next slide here. We are going to be covering how to email more than 500 recipients, best practices for sending a mass mail, and also how to prevent mass mailing errors. Now, I'm gonna start with how to email more than 500 recipients. And let me just say this, while we cannot send a mass mailing to more than 500 people at a time, and that's to avoid being marked as spam, we can break up a larger list into groups of 500. Now this can be accomplished by using tear sheets. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with those. And just as an example, a tear sheet containing 2,000 names could easily be divided up into distribution lists of 500. So let me navigate next here to Bullhorn. Just going to be switching screens here. And what if I wanted to contact all of my employees who are currently working? So while we can't email placements directly, we could use tear sheets to email those candidates associated with the placements. So I'm gonna start off here today by going to my main menu and opening up the placement list. And the first thing that I'm going to do once this list loads is conduct a search of all of my placed candidates. And of course, I always tell Bullhorn users, you know, when you come to a list, double check that upper right hand corner, make sure you don't see a big red clear button because if it were there, that would tell me that um, I might have some filters applied to this list currently, or perhaps I had run a search previously. And Bullhorn remembers those things. So it's important to clear out everything so that you can begin fresh. And I don't see that clear button, so I'm confident that I'm looking at a complete list of all my placements right now. And I'm going to go ahead and do that search by clicking in the search window here. And then adding an additional criteria field here. And that field will be the status field, the status of the placement. So I'm going to tell Bullhorn to include any placements in this search that are either in a submitted or an approved status. Because I know just from experience that sometimes we forget to change the status from submitted to approved. And it's very possible we have people out working already um, where their placements have not yet been approved. And then I'll go ahead and click my search button here on the bottom right. And that'll bring up my search results list. Now, from this list, I'm going to check this select all checkbox that you see here on the top left. And you can immediately see that this list contains over 1,400 matching records. So I'll just select them all. And then from that number selected drop down here on the top right, I can choose add to tear sheet. Now in this window, if I'm going to create a new tear sheet list, which is what my plan is here today, I'll need to enter the name of that new tear sheet in the bottom field. So let's just go ahead and call this my working candidates. And then of course I could choose my visibility. I might want to keep this private or I could make it public depending upon who might be using this tear sheet in the future. And then I'll just save it. Now it may take a moment or two because remember that's quite a few records that I'm adding to that tear sheet list. So I'll give it just a few moments to save. And then once that's done, I'm going to navigate to my candidate list next. And the reason I'm going to do that, and this is just a side note, is because when you create a tear sheet from a placement list, it adds both the candidates and the jobs or vacancy records that are related to those placements. So now I'm going to go back to my main menu here open up the candidate list 
and conduct another search. But again, before I do that, just going to double check, looking for that clear button. Don't see it, so I am looking at a complete list of all the candidates right now in my Bullhorn database, and I'm able to conduct my search. So by clicking in that search window, I'm also going to use additional criteria this time. And I've already got one field added here that I, and that's really all I need. Um, I'm going to search for the field called tear sheets. And then I'm going to tell Bullhorn to include all the candidates who are on that new tear sheet list that I just created called working candidates. All right, now once I do that, I'm able to run my search. And I come up with my list of results on this list. All right, so once I have my candidates here in my candidate list, I can select that select all checkbox again on the top left. And you can see that I have 507 records on that search results list. Now, by going back to my blue selected drop down button here on the top right, I'm able to go to my actions and add those records to a distribution list. Now, in this new window, I'm just going to toggle to create a new distribution list to this button here on the right. And then just like a tear sheet list, I have to give my new distribution list a name. So I'm going to keep it consistent here. I'm also going to call my distribution list working candidates, just like that. And then check the visibility. Again, you have the option um, to make it public or keep it private, depending upon who might be using this in the future. And then we'll save it. Now again, it may take a few moments because of the number of records that we're adding to that new distribution list. But once you have your distribution list set up, you can then navigate back to that main menu again and open up your new distribution list. Um, so here's my menu item for distribution list. And then from the drop down here at the top, I can select the distribution list that I just created from my tear sheets. And here it is here called working candidates. So that, of course, will pull up a list of all of the candidates on that particular uh, distribution list. And you're probably getting the hang of this now. Um, I'm going to next check the select all checkbox here on the top left. And then select my group of records. And from our number selected drop down here on the top right, I can choose email all. Now this is going to take us to a composed message screen and you'll notice that the name of the distribution list is in my distribution list field. And of course the next step would be to add in a subject line for the message that I'd like to send. And let's say this is for our uh, next webinar that's coming up in January. So I'm going to just call this my upcoming webinar. And then from there, I'm going to add in my message text. So right above my signature line here, I'll create the text of my message. And, you know, for training purposes here, I'm just going to keep this brief. I'm going to say something like, please join us in January for our free webinar. And just leave it at that. And I want to make sure I don't have any typos there, so we'll just fix that. And then, of course, I can send this off to all of those candidates on that particular distribution list. So I'll click the Send button. Now, again, remember, due to the number of records, it may take a few moments to send. 
but the real advantage of doing it this way is that Bullhorn will be able to tell you what records were not included on the email because of any invalid email addresses or lack of consent or even if they previously opted out of future mass mailings. And typically what will happen is this page will load to show you those recipients who were not sent the email. So as you can see, there were a total of 18, not too bad. And in this top group, these are people who had previously opted out of mass mailings. And then the group at the bottom are ones that have invalid email addresses. So moving on, now let's take a look at some best practices for sending a mass mailing in Bullhorn. We're gonna be discussing the different message types, that is normal versus mass mail, also message templates, as well as personalization tags. Now, when you are conducting a mass mailing from a distribution list, it's really important to pay attention to the message type field. If you remember just previously, I selected email all, and while that may look like it's not a um, blank carbon copying those recipients, it truly is because as long as the mass mail is selected in that message type field, it will send a blank carbon copy to each person on that list. Now, to demonstrate this, let me go back to Bullhorn. And I'm going to go back to my distribution list. And I'm going to stay on this same working candidates distribution list that I just used a moment ago. And again, if I go to the selected drop down and choose email all, let me just point out that the message type defaults to mass mail. Now this will ensure that all the recipients will not see each other's email addresses. Of course there's the normal option as well, but for mass mailing purposes and to ensure that it does work like a blind carbon copy, it should default to mass mail. Now I'm going to close out of that composed message screen for now because I also wanted to talk just for a moment about another efficiency tool, which is the use of email message templates for any content that you plan on using again. You know, just as an example, recruiters are often reaching out to candidates to check on their upcoming availability, um, especially when they're finishing up an assignment. Now, to create a message template, we can again go back to our main menu this time we'll click on the tools folder and then select the message templates. So once on this page, we'll just click the button on the top right to add a template. And then when you're creating a new message template, we have to first give it a name. That is a required field. So let's call this one check on um, availability. And then you set your visibility here and just like before with the distribution list, um, you can choose to keep it private for yourself or you might want to share it with everybody on your team by marking it public. And then of course down below in the message text field is where we would create that template that we could use over and over again. So again, I'm going to type in something fairly brief. Let's say hello. And something like, I wanted to touch base with you because my records show you are nearing the end of your placement. And maybe I'd love to work with you again and maybe the last paragraph would say something like please don't hesitate to contact me 
Now, once you have your text of your message created, all you have to do is click the Save button down here at the bottom right. And then to use that message template going forward, you know, when you're ready to send another mass mailing, um, you can do it from any list um, that you plan to send that mailing from. In this case, let's go back to our placement list. And I already have it open over here in my bowling alley. And for this example, perhaps I might just want to select a few records uh, to send that mass mailing to, maybe the first 25 on the list. So if I select the checkbox, remember by doing that, it does by default only select the twi uh, first 25 records there unless you choose to select the entire group or if you go down to the bottom of the screen, it will load up the next set of 25 records. So now you'll see I'm actually going to mass mail a total of 50 records. And I can do that by coming to the blue number selected button here um, on the upper right hand corner. And then I would just select email candidates in this case. But once again, on the compose message screen, um, if I'm going to use a template to find those, just scroll down here. Um, you'll actually find them right above, or excuse me, right below the subject line here. And so if I click on the message templates, the default is to show you your own. So here's the new one that I just created called check on availability. So I'm going to just select that and it will pre-populate my message right here in the message text box. And then next, what you'd want to do is make any necessary adjustments to this message before you send it out. For example, you might choose to use one of our personalization tags and that allows you to send mass mailings with more of a personal touch um, because you can automatically insert specific information from each record. So just as an example, let's say I wanted to include the recipient's name. I'm going to insert uh, my cursor right there after the word hello, and then go up to my personalized dropdown here and choose the candidate's first name so that that'll appear at the beginning of the message. And then perhaps I might also want to include the name of the company where the candidates are currently working as well. And again, it just really helps to further personalize your messages. And so I may want to insert that right at the end here of my first sentence. So it, says, uh, it will say something like, my records show you're nearing the end of your placement at, and then I would just go to the personalized drop down again and insert that company tag, just like that. Now, while I could send off the message just like that, what if I also wanted to include the personalization tags in my template itself? And that way they would always be there uh, whenever I use this template in the future. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to copy these tags to include them in the actual template so that they'll have, um, you know, I'll have them again in the future to use. And of course, if I've made any errors in my template, you can see the word base is misspelled. I could make that edit at the same time to my message template. But first, what I'm going to do is just copy that name tag. So just be sure to pick up the coding itself and I'll just copy that. And then I'll need to reopen my message template. So I'm going to go back to my message template list here, click on the title of that template that I just created, check on availability, and then insert the tag where I want it to appear. So it would be right after the word hello. And then I simply have to just paste it in. Now, at the same time, I can correct, uh, correct my typo here in the template. Now, I'm going to go back to that Compose message screen to next copy the company tag. So remember, I still have it open in my bowling alley. I can come here and just select the company tag, copy it, 
and then once again edit my message template that I still have open. So I can come here to the end of my uh, first sentence and then paste that in. Now, once I do that, all I have to do is resave my template and whenever I use it in the future, those personalization tags will always be there. So in other words, it will just replace the tags with the recipient's name and then also the company that they're working for. Now, our final topic for today, and let me just go back to my slides here for a moment, is how to prevent mass mailing errors. And you know, the primary reason that I used a distribution list earlier, rather than a tear sheet, um, when I was sending my mass mailing, is because a message may fail to send if anyone on that tear sheet has a missing or even an incomplete email address. Also, tear sheets do not provide you with a list of records that prevent the message from sending. And if you remember, we got that error message to show us those records um, that we were unable to send to. Whereas when you use a distribution list, it will provide you with that list of records so you know which uh, candidate records you would need to go back in and edit, uh, either obtain a valid email address um, or fix any um, errors that um, you might have in the actual email address field. But you know, another common reason for mass mailing errors is due to file attachments. The total attachment size limit is 10 megabytes. And the file size is actually multiplied by the number of recipients for your mass mailing. So our best practice that we recommend is to send to fewer recipients or consider emailing a link to the file instead. So today we covered how to email more than 500 recipients, some mass mailing best practices, and also how to prevent mass mailing errors. So I wanna thank all of you for joining. I know this is a busy time of year. Um, I hope you found this webinar helpful, but don't forget for more information, you can always check out our customer community by just going to help Bullhorn Help there in the upper right hand corner of your interface and just search on mass mail. You'll find plenty of articles there um, that will really serve as a good resource for you. But back to you now, Sarah, for any questions. Sure, thanks, Nancy. We do have a couple questions that came through here. The first one is, what if I switch it to normal versus the mass mail message type? Can I still use personalization tags? Oh, okay, well, yes. The answer is definitely yes. Regardless of whether the message type is set to a normal or a mass mail, those personalization tags are always going to be available. And again, let me just show you that from the candidate list. I have a number of records selected. And if I go to my selected drop down here and choose to email those candidates, and again, this is giving you the warning that, you know, when you're doing um, this mass mailing from a list, you can only email 500 at a time. But you'll see on the Compose message screen that it definitely defaults to the mass mail message type. And then, of course, here's your normal type. Um, so you should not have to worry about that. And the personalization tags are right here. And even if I switch to a normal mailing, they're still available. Anything Thanks, else? Nancy. Yes, a couple more. Um, okay. Our next question is, why does my bullhorn default to a normal message type? That is a great question. And if that's happening to you when you are selecting to email a group of candidates from a list, and you're noticing that um, it's defaulting to this normal message type instead, there is a system setting that you can change if you're a Bullhorn administrator, and it's called the default message type. Now, 
This setting determines if females sent from bullhorn will have either a normal or a mass male selected on that composed message screen. And just as a side note though, emails that are sent from distribution lists ignore this setting and they are always set to mass males. Thanks, Nancy. Our next sure. question is, why do I have to copy and paste the personalization tags into a template? Uh, well, there are two reasons. First, because the personalization dropdown does not appear on the template screen itself. Um, in other words, if I went back to my message templates and I was adding a new one, you'll see normally it's right up above the message text box, but you don't have that available here. And then secondly, you never want to type that code, that personalization tag itself, into the template manually. Because by doing so, the recipient may end up seeing that code rather than the personal information like their name or the company where they're currently working. Awesome. Thanks, Nancy. So sure. we actually got a ton of questions in and there's no way we're going to have time to get to all of them. So I'm going to end the webinar there. Um, but as a reminder, we will be sharing the recording with everyone who attended or registered within the next 24 hours. But we're also going to follow up via email for all questions that came through that we did not have time to cover. For any additional training resources, don't forget to log into the Learning Hub, as Nancy said earlier. That's through the customer community at help.bullhorn.com. Thank you, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.